we need to start with what we agree on. We see Jesus as Lord. We believe that he's changed our lives. You know, that being in relationship with him has put us into relationship with each other. Obviously, we have the gospel in common, but we build so many little protective hedges and walls. It's positively pharisaical. We just need something, some other framework to, to get us together, to think about our similarities more than our differences. Are there things that unite us? Are there things that we find that we have in common? How does this good news story impact us? When we looked at that from much more of a sense of who are our neighbors that Jesus is talking about, and uh, what did they have to offer, and how can we come alongside what God's already doing in our neighborhoods? Some of the things around denominations started to matter a little less. When we started to work side by side, we started to realize um, how much we had in common. You realize, well I realize, that most of those things that churches get hung up on are so deeply unimportant to the kingdom. I mean, seriously, they are adiaphora. We should not be planting ourselves on little hillocks when there are mountains that people are dying at the bottom of. And that mountain is, is how can I get from a place of aloneness and not being known to a place of understanding that I am loved and knowing that I am safe? And church people had an inkling of what it is to be so alone because you have never heard the gospel in a way that speaks to your personhood. I mean, I fight for the things that I believe in, but but I believe much more profoundly that the church needs to be a place of absolute and utter welcome to the table. We didn't have to argue over uh, small parts of theology because we're not a denomination. Uh, we're a group of people seeking the good of the city. True City is not a denomination. It's not even a, a group with like a set agenda with a to-do list. It's churches that are each doing their own thing in their own place in the way that they're called, but recognizing that they're part of a bigger gathering of God's people. And within that, choosing to say, how can we do this together? How can we support each other? How can we spur one another on to mission for the good of our city? And I think that's so beneficial because we learn from each other. We realize we're not the only only ones doing God's work and we get to celebrate and see what God's doing in so many different ways around our city and because it tangibly helps us live out the prayer of Jesus that we'd all be one just as he is one. Jesus has this prayer that actually has not yet been answered which is terrifying to think because it's Jesus but he says I pray father that uh, they may be one as you and I are one and I just think of the prayer of Jesus is the church is to be together as one then that is the call in every city. And so to that end, it will always be contextual, but I definitely think churches together for the good of the city they're in is what cities need, I think, to fully thrive holistically. Churches that are very different from each other, interacting with each other, respecting each other, um, uh, really uh, holding each other up as examples, that, that's impactful. It's something that the world can't do. Like we can't, you know, we're very aware of the fact that we can't uh, bridge across differences in this time and place. So if we learn to do that as the church, and I think the spirit empowers us to do that, then I think our witness is strengthened in, in beautiful ways and our worship is strengthened in beautiful ways. God's people getting together and working together for the good of their community can only always be good, can only always be a blessing.